Oh, hey everyone, welcome to another video. Now, today, we have a very important video. Now, today we're talking about diversification. I'm sure you've heard of it before, and if you've heard of diversification, you've probably heard the old adage, don't put all your eggs in one backpack. I didn't have a basket. So when it comes to investing in the stock market, you wouldn't want to have all your risk in just one stock because what if that one company has a huge scandal? Or what if it turns into the next blockbuster? So what you want to do is you want to spread the risk between different stocks. So in this video, we're going to go over a lot of stuff that has to do with diversification. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss how many stocks you may need to have in your portfolio to have a diversified portfolio. And we're also going to talk about diversification using ETFs, using index funds, we're gonna talk about sectors, different styles, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you what I kinda like as my preferred method of having a diversified portfolio or building out a diversified portfolio as kind of a beginner investor. So, let's go ahead and get into the video. So when talking about diversification, really we're talking about risk. And so we're talking about risk in a portfolio of stocks. And the way we use diversification is to reduce some of the risk that's in that portfolio. Now there's two types of risk and you can only diversify one type of risk with diversification. So the type of risk that you can lower using diversification is called unsystematic risk. And this is really business risk, so the risk of a company or a business. Now the other risk that you can't diversify out of your portfolio is called systematic risk. Now this is risk associated with the overall market. So for example, uh, if there's a war, if there's political unrest, if there's a recession or something like that, these are things that are just inherent in the stock market and they're risks that you can't diversify out of your portfolio by buying different stocks. So just know that when you're talking about diversification and the lowering of risk, you're talking about lowering the unsystematic risk associated with the individual companies in your portfolio of stocks. So now we might wanna figure out how many stocks you need to own in order to diversify your portfolio and have a reduction of that unsystematic risk. So what you wanna do is try to figure out how many stocks you need to do that. Okay, let's try to answer that question. How many stocks do you need to achieve diversification? And here's the unfortunate answer. There is kind of no answer. So there have been all these studies that have been done and no concrete conclusion has been made. So one study said uh, if you have 12 to 18 stocks, then you can achieve 90% diversification of the market. Another study said 60 stocks will give you 95% diversification. One other study said you need 168 stocks to achieve complete diversification. So of course, results across the board but let's kind of think about this for a second. So if you owned 168 stocks, can you really follow what's going on in 168 stocks in the news and their earnings releases and all these different things? Of course you can't. So you can't build a portfolio of 168 stocks and really understand those companies. Now let's go back to the 12 stock portfolio. Well, yeah, you probably can understand what's going on in 12 different companies. So maybe on the lower end, maybe 12 to 20 stocks might be okay for diversification. Now, here's another thing you need to remember. Having a 90% diversification means that there's that 10% that is not following the stock market. If you have 100% diversification, what's that mean? It means that you're following exactly what the stock market's doing. And so that means you can't beat the stock market if you're completely diversified and you're going to be tracking that stock market. So having a limited number of stocks in your portfolio but still being diversified might be what you're trying to achieve if you're trying to beat the stock market. Another thing we can do is kind of look at some of the great investors and see what they say. Uh, for example, Benjamin Graham, who is the teacher of Warren Buffett and the father of value investing, he said in his book, The Intelligent Investor, that 15 to 30 stocks are a diversified portfolio of stocks. So if you listen to Benjamin Graham, maybe 15 to 30 stocks is enough. Jim Cramer on CNBC, 
He says that 10 stocks in 10 different sectors is considered a diversified portfolio. So here we see that some of these great investors also say that maybe between 10 and 20 stocks would be okay to have a diversified portfolio. So if up to 20 stocks gets you diversified, the next question you might wanna ask yourself is, do you care about beating the stock market? Is that what you're trying to achieve? Because a lot of people don't end up beating the stock market. So if that's not something that you're interested in trying to do, then maybe you just want to track the stock market. And by doing that, it's actually really easy because you can just get an index fund or an ETF that tracks the stock market. So how do you do that? You go to your broker. For example, I use Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab has different ETFs. And one of those ETFs is SWPPX. It tracks the S&P 500. So you can put your money in there. It's 0.02%. It costs nothing. It's really cheap. And now you have diversification. So the S&P 500 consists of the top 500 largest companies based on market cap in the United States. So there you go. Now you have a diversified portfolio and it tracks the top 500 largest companies. All right, so now you understand that you can have index funds and they'll basically track the market. So if you're not interested in trying to beat the market, you could have an index fund or an ETF. Okay, so let's now kind of talk about something called asset allocation. And this is different than diversification, so a lot of people don't kind of understand the difference here. Asset allocation is having different asset classes. So for example, if you have a portfolio of stocks, well, you have stocks as an asset class. But also, if you have some bonds, then bonds is a different asset class. So the mix of how much stocks and bonds you have, that's asset allocation. That's not diversification. So when it comes to having a proper risk profile, you wanna see how much money you have in the stock market, how much is in bonds, maybe how much is in real estate or commodities. So there's different ways of having a diversified portfolio of assets, that's called asset allocation. So for example, if you don't wanna beat the stock market and you just wanna invest in ETFs or index funds, you can just buy an index fund or an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 or the total stock market. And then you can also invest in an ETF that tracks the bond market. So you could literally have two different investments, two ETFs, and you could have a diversified portfolio that's also asset allocated to your risk profile. So here's something that'll help you not with diversification or asset allocation, just, you know, with your life. And that's by hitting the like button. So hit that like button and subscribe. And maybe these videos that I make will help you down the road. So that would be great for you, and it actually would be great for me, so it's mutually beneficial. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so asset allocation is different than diversification. Now let's go back to diversification, and let's talk about how you can use sectors or industries to diversify your portfolio. So going back to Jim Cramer, he says that you can have 10 stocks in 10 different sectors, and that can help you become diversified. So what is a sector? So for example, Bank of America might fall under the financial sector. So a sector is a part of the stock market where a company might fall under. There's the financial sector, there's the healthcare sector, there's the energy sector, consumer discretionary. So there's these different sectors. Now, of course, you're not very diversified if all of your money is in one sector. If you have 10 stocks and all 10 of your stocks are in the healthcare sector, and there's a very huge problem with the healthcare sector, then that's not going to be good for your money. So you want money in the healthcare sector, in the financial sector, in the consumer discretionary sector. Now you can also decide which sectors you're bullish on, which sectors you're bearish on. So maybe you don't want to have money in all sectors, but deciding sectors that you think are going to be in a good business cycle right now and then investing in companies that are inside those sectors could be a good way of diversifying. So now let's talk about another way of diversifying or cutting up your portfolio. So another way of diversifying our portfolio of stocks is by diversifying the style of those stocks. So when it comes to stocks, we can group them into different styles. So one way to do this is by deciding the capitalization of the stock. So how big is the company? So for example, there might be a small cap stock, which would be a smaller company, a mid cap stock, or a large cap stock. And a large cap stock would be more of a blue chip company. Next, we can further decide the style of the stock by figuring out if it's more of a growth stock or a value stock. Now, this is really based on the price that the stock is selling for. 
And so a stock might fall under a large cap growth stock, a large cap value stock, it could be a small cap value stock. So when we're looking at the stocks that we're investing in, we can see which style the stock is falling under. And if we wanna have different stocks in different style boxes, that can also potentially help us with diversification. Now we can even add to this, there's also international stocks versus domestic stocks. And even in international stocks, there's emerging market stocks or developed market stocks. So for example, if you have a stock that's German, well, you have stock in a company that's in Germany. For example, Volkswagen is out of Germany. It's technically an international stock. However, if you have an emerging market stock, for example, in the Philippines, where I currently am living, well, there's a company called Jollibee, for example, that actually sells as an ADR, an American Depository Receipt, that you could buy in the United States, and it's a company that's based here in the Philippines. Of course, disclaimer, I'm not telling you that you should buy any of these stocks. These are just examples. Okay, so before we go over my preferred portfolio diversification strategy, let's do a quick little recap of everything that we just went over. So how many stocks to have in your portfolio? Well, we said that there's no magic number, but having 12 to 20 stocks may be okay to have. Uh, you might be able to keep track of what's going on with 12 to 20 stocks. You also won't have a 100% diversified portfolio, but you'll maybe achieve up to 90% of diversification Remember that having a 100% diversified portfolio, you'll probably track the market and you won't be able to beat the market. But the other thing is, do you actually wanna to try to beat the stock market? So if you don't, then maybe you just wanna have an index fund or an ETF that tracks the market. So the other thing we talked about is asset allocation and that is simply how much money you have in different asset classes. So how much you have in stocks versus bonds versus commodities first properties and things like that. We also talked about diversification using sectors and using styles. So diversification in sectors, meaning you should have stocks that are in different sectors, don't have a few stocks all in the same sector, and then different styles. So the different styles being small cap, mid cap, micro cap, growth first value. So you can also have different styles of stocks as well. Okay, so now let's talk about my preferred diversification strategy when you're kind of starting out with investing. So here's a question. When you start investing, how do you create a diversified portfolio if you don't have any positions yet? So you have a few options. Well, one, you could just buy an index fund and you'll be diversified. So great, that's fine. But if you want to own individual stocks, then how do you buy a bunch of different stocks and have a diversified portfolio? That's the problem. So what do most people do when they build their portfolio when they're starting out? Well, they basically take some of their money and they just buy a stock, and they buy another stock, and they buy another stock, but they don't really take the time to do the research, find 10 or 20 stocks, and then buy those stocks and create a diversified portfolio. They kind of piecemeal it together. And as they're doing that, they're taking more risk because they don't have a diversified portfolio or they're not putting the time in to find the right companies. So the way I like to approach this or visualize this when building a portfolio from scratch is to create something called a core and satellite portfolio. So a core and satellite portfolio has at its very center the largest investment. And then around the core are satellite investments that are smaller than the largest investment. And so the way this works is by utilizing an index fund or an ETF as your core. This way it stays as a diversified portfolio when you make your first investments. So for example, if you wanna invest with the Charles Schwab ETF that tracks the S&P 500, it will be a diversified ETF. So the ticker symbol for this would be SWPPX. And so now as you add money to your portfolio, you add it to this SWPPX. So now as you do your research and find stocks to buy, you can sell some of SWPPX and now buy this new stock. For example, let's say you wanted to buy stock in AT&T. Now, one of the reasons this works is because, for example, Charles Schwab doesn't charge you commissions for buying and selling stocks anymore. So you can always sell parts of this SWPPX ETF and then add more money to whatever stocks you're going to buy and there's no commissions. And you can continuously do this and buy more and more stocks as the SWPPX ETF shrinks. You also have the option of selling all of the SWPPX fund eventually once you have enough stocks to have a diversified portfolio, or you can decide to always have a portion of your portfolio in an index fund that's diversified. For example, maybe you want 50% of this core and satellite portfolio to always stay in SWPPX and the other 50% to be in 10 different stocks. 
And so this is what's great about the core and satellite portfolio is it allows you to add money to a diversified investment, stay flexible by selling money in that investment and buying new positions, and then deciding if you wanna keep the core or replace it by spreading that money throughout all the different diversified investments. Okay, everyone, that is it. That's the core and satellite portfolio that I think is the best for many beginner investors to use when they're building out their portfolio. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. It seriously helps me with the algorithm and subscribe because hopefully you like this video and maybe you'll want to see some more of these educational videos going forward. And also, why don't you watch another one of my videos and that will help me actually and it might even help you. So thanks for watching and I will see you in that next video when you click it.